I've added uh, while I was off screen is the simple controls for government spending. So have government spending being a percentage of GDP starting at 30% and variable by up, up and down by 10% of GDP, which is just to have large steps. The same for the tax rate. So I've got a tax rate on firms. Let's just zoom in and show that. Whoops. Zoom in this way and show them more clearly. So it's spending rate on firms and a taxing rate on firms multiplied by the level of income gives you government spending on firms and government taxation of firms. And I've also started, haven't quite finished, defining equity as it is affected by a government sector being inside here. So now I have the, the government equity being the sum of the central bank's equity and the treasury's equity. This over here is now not the economy's equity but the economy of the non-government sector. So I'll just actually rename all this. This is a V underscore E to NG, non-government equity. And I also need to have, I've got, this is now non-bank, that is actually non-bank and non-government equity, so let's rename that. I'll call it NBG, let's actually make it, um, I've stuck with the, no, I'll stick with those, those, those labels. Okay, so that's non-bank and non-government equity. Um, and this is bank equity still, um, but now I, uh, let's see, so non-bank, non-bank and slash government, just to give a label, make these models easier to read, and then this one here is non-government. Now where I'm starting from, uh, government equity is zero, and so is non-government equity. I simulate the model, I've now got taxes defined. Well, that was fun. Okay, one more thing to Russell little check out. Hello. What a weird bug. Okay, so I now need to include government equity over here. Let's take a copy of that item. Bring it over here. I shall delete. Um, let's see which one is worth getting rid of. Because I want to show how the government equity interacts with non-government equity now as well. So let's just actually have a third chart, an extra chart here. Drag that ratio is over here and have another equity chart. Oh, that's double clicking to bring up the magnified screen. So let's actually just I'll delete each of these wires here. Ah, sorry. Right click options. So, government, the, this is non government equity I'll put there. And bank versus non bank. equity I'll put here. So there's bank equity. Now to have non-bank equity as well I need to add the government to the equity position of the non-bank non-government. So let's take a copy of that down here. So that is what we call the private sector. That is the neither the government nor the banking sector. And if I want to then say, well, what is the strictly non-bank sector, then combine here, add the government to that, and now what I've got is the 
non-bank sector consists of both the non-bank, uh, non, non non-government private sector and the government itself. So this is now the non-bank equity. And let's hit the stop button there, which recalculates everything back to the initial conditions. And notice, I'll zoom in here and show this. Let's drag it over a bit, hold the shift key down and then drag to, to do that particular trick. This is looking messy, my apologies, but just to take you through the logic, oh, this is the debt ratio, I'll just label the debt ratio, just to make that clearly something else. So what we have here, add the firm sector to the <coughs> capitalist ca equity, you get the capitalist e equity overall, including its equity relative to the banking sector and relative to um, uh, firms. Add the workers together as well and you get the non-bank, non-government equity. Add the banking equity to, to that and you get the non-government equity. Um, over here, add the non-bank, non-government equity to government. You get the non, you get the non-bank equity. So let's just actually make that uh, label that as well. There's a punchline coming, by the way, in case you're wondering, but it's going to take a while to get there. So this is the non-bank equity. Now notice what applied with the. Um, um, sector, the model without a, without a government applies when I bring the government in and that is that the non-bank uh, e equity, the non-banking sector including the government is negative because the banking sector has to have positive equity. That rule applies uh, whether you talk about a pure uh, a private sector credit economy or you're talking as we are now about the mixed credit fiat economy in which we actually live. So I'll just actually go back and check and see what I've got for simulation values here. So I have taxation and spending at the same rate, so there'll be no net government effect here. Um, and I've got lending and repayment, I'll make them at the same rate as well, so no change there. And what you can see uh, is that the uh, there is a change in the initial conditions, the equity of the uh, banking sector rises, the equity of the non banking sector falls. So banking equity is 12, equity in the non-banking sector, which includes the government now, is minus 12. So let's see what happens if I, for example, have... Actually, I'll go, I want to separately show the... Um, pardon me, I haven't finished doing that yet. So I want to have the non-bank uh, and non-government sector, which is the private sector of the economy. I want to see how they go compared to the non-government, which includes the, um, the banks, and then the government. Uh, let's see, I've got that label, government versus non-government, government equity, non-government equity, and the private sector. Let's actually take the private sector out separately, because that's the, when we talk about and when the phrase taxpayers is, used, taxpayers is used, this is the sector they're talking about. So this is the private sector. That's called the private sector on another graph. I'm being called for lunch. I'll be back shortly. And this is the dollars they have in equity. Okay, let's save that for a moment. 